Okay, let's talk about kind of a controversial statement. Using DaVinci Resolve over Premiere Pro to edit videos. These programs definitely have their differences, and even five years ago, they wouldn't have been able to be compared together, but they've both been changing pretty rapidly, and there's a ton of people choosing DaVinci Resolve, and for good reason. Most notably being selling your soul to Adobe and DaVinci having a free Hollywood level software and then a one-time fee to actually buy into the studio version. So I work on a small team editing videos for Matt Diabella and about eight months ago or so, we made the switch over to DaVinci Resolve purely for the fact that they have cloud-based projects. So that allows anyone across the globe to be in the exact same project file as another user, which still to this day completely blows my mind, but it really helps our workflow and it streamlines it, so it's really, really quick and efficient for us. So when we were initially making the change over to Resolve, I was pretty hesitant to say the least because I have so much time, energy, and money invested into the Adobe ecosystem. So I was a little worried in general that using two programs would slow me down in editing because now my brain would have to kind of learn two different ways to approach one task, one in Premiere and one in DaVinci, and it would have to keep tabs on both of them. So I'm definitely still not as fast as I was in Premiere, and I definitely can't troubleshoot the same because I spent 10 years in Adobe, but it really is stretching my brain, and I do like that. Recently, I heard Nico from Quarter Crew kind of explain learning like this in a new light, and it really hit me and made me a little bit less hesitant to continue what I'm doing and uh, I want to share that with you right now before we actually get into it because I think that it might change your viewpoint too. You can't at some point decide you're done learning. <clears throat> I feel like back in the day when things were a little bit slower, you can be like, I've locked in my specialty, I've refined my skill, I'm not going to worry about learning anything else, I'm just going to stay, stay in my lane, keep my skill as refined as it can be and be the ultimate craftsman. And I feel like these days, if you want to be the ultimate craftsman, you have to constantly be willing to stop using the tool you're using and learn a new tool. Like you have to keep your brain flexible and it's really easy to like stop. And like, there's a lot of people now it's like, I've invested so many points in After Effects or anything. I was like, I don't want to shift gears. And like, I totally get that because it does take some time, but you also can't let your brain get to the point where it crystallizes and you can't shift gears. And if you want to take the time to learn a program and you're unable to, it's like you're in a really bad spot in a world where it's not about being good at one thing. It's about being good at learning all the new things they rapidly come out and just staying on top of all of it, you know? So let's talk about the 10 biggest learning curves I had while switching over and learning DaVinci Resolve. The first thing that happens when you launch DaVinci Resolve is it brings you into a database or project library. So all your project files are kept in this project library or database as DaVinci calls it. So this is totally different from Premiere Pro when you set up a new project in Premiere or Final Cut, it asks you where you wanna save it on your local drive. And DaVinci doesn't even give you this option. I, I assume it's because of some backend wizardry that's going on, I have no idea. But the way I have solved this is setting up the database on a local drive where I keep all my actual footage on. So whenever I unplug this, my database comes with me and I can continue editing the projects on DaVinci from a different computer. And the only other way to do this is to export your project from the database that you're working on and bring it into a new database. And it's definitely worth mentioning that DaVinci has cloud projects, which basically lets you set up a database in the cloud so you can access it from anywhere. And this is actually how I work among a small team that is spread out across the globe. And this feature absolutely blows my mind and is very cool. So even before you actually get into a new project, it's a learning curve by itself. And then when you actually launch DaVinci, the actual UI was a total learning adjustment as well for me. And you can see kind of behind me here that I have uh, two monitors set up and that is because I adapted my Premiere workflow to have bins and sort of all the metadata stuff on one side and then the project and timeline on my main screen. And DaVinci does not give you the flexibility the same way that Premiere does, but it does actually make sense when you use the program. So to simply explain what I mean, you basically can't take bins or panels and move them to where you want to go. Uh, but you can close them and you can 
do things like this to make them longer and more accessible to view. So after a few months of using this, I feel like it's actually quicker to make panels appear and disappear when you actually need them most. And it just creates a cleaner work environment to work from, but you don't have that flexibility to tell the panels exactly where to be. But they do have the basics like offering dual screen. So adding folders as bins. In Premiere, this doesn't quite work and it kind of messes up the file structure. In DaVinci, you literally can just take a file or all your folders and uh, drag it over into the master and it creates all your folders and has your files inside the same way that they do on your system. And in Premiere, that's just not the case unless you have an extension called Watchtower I absolutely love this plugin and it definitely is a one-up, but it's not native. I definitely will miss Watchtower. Okay, it's no secret that the autosave and the stability of Resolve is definitely a cut above Premiere Pro. And just for the pure reason that there's not a pop-up in my face every two minutes or five minutes. I'm literally trying to export. And then Premiere decided that it's gonna save and now I can't export. Oh my god. <laughs> Not to say that DaVinci hasn't crashed on me. I've crashed it a bunch of times, but the difference here is, is that I've never lost any work with DaVinci. You can see in the top of the program that it just says edited beside your project name, and this is telling you what progress has been made, and if it ever reaches red, I tend to hit Control S or Command S to save my progress. But if you don't, it will save for you, and even upon quitting, it'll save for you, and no pop-ups ever. And that is all I can ask for. <laughs> okay, here's something that's been frustrating me switching programs and that is effects. Copy and pasting effects in Premiere is super simple. You can have an entire effects stack and pick and choose which ones you wanna copy over from clip to clip. And even on top of that, you can just highlight um, all of what you want and right click and save it as a preset. Super simple. Okay, so I just have an effects stack here that I wanna copy and paste. So I'm just gonna select them all. And this is really the key thing. Like you're able to, like if I didn't wanna take this zoom, I could just take these three and then copy it and paste it over here immediately. Alternatively, I could also could highlight all these, save it as a preset, you know, make a quick, easy preset that I can later tweak. And it'll be right here, so I can just click, drag and drop. And now all my settings have rolled over into this new clip here. And in DaVinci, it just feels like something is off or missing because you can only copy and paste all the effects from one clip to another. You don't have an option other than that. So let's do the same thing in Resolve. Say I had a couple random effects. Here's a, a group of three. All I can do is uh, copy, command C, and then option V, which is paste effects. And all I want to do is paste the plugins, but I don't get to choose which ones. I just have to apply all of them and then manually delete the one that I don't want. So this gets a little frustrating if there's resizes or stuff like that, uh, but there's also no way to make it a, a quick little preset unless you know you navigate to Fusion. For the sake of simplicity, I do really miss the ease of moving effects around and making uh, presets from effects. Another seemingly simple task is just adding a mask. Uh, that totally threw me when switching over programs. It's so quick and easy to add a simple mask in Premiere. You can pretty much do it on every single effect within the effect controls. But in DaVinci, it's not the same. You actually have to switch pages to the color tab, which at first I thought was actually more work until I used it a few times and figured out how actually robust the tool is. There's a bunch of simple mask tools, but DaVinci also has something called Magic Mask and that is mind blowing. It's basically rotoscoping uh, right in the program and that combined with the powerful tracker inside DaVinci makes masking actually easier once you learn it fully. All right, this next one is a huge one for me and that is text. I've had nothing but text issues since switching over to DaVinci Resolve. And if you know this channel, you know that uh, I make Mogurs within After Effects to use in Premiere and they generally run playback fine. I've never really had any issues. I've especially never had issues with the native text tool when you just hit T inside Premiere. 
that's always been flawless. And, you know, jumping up to using Mogerts and presets and stuff inside of Premiere has never given me uh, too many issues, not as much as Resolve has with the text. I, I just, I seriously can't wrap my head around it because there is a ton of built-in presets into Resolve and they have a main two. One is just basic text, and then the other one is text plus. Text plus allows you to open the text comp in Fusion, so you can manipulate it however you want and save a preset, and basic text is pretty much what you see is what you get. But I've had nonstop issues from render issues to export issues and playback issues, pretty much every single thing you could imagine. And then there's little things that drive me nuts too like there's no italics inside of davinci like you just you can't just make a text italic it has to be listed in the font or you have to dive over and turn some settings and and make it makeshift that way which arguably i get is maybe more control but just for the speed and ease of use i can't wrap my head around this whole text thing. It, it, it really, really does bother me. But I do have a lot of faith in Blackmagic that they will continue working on this to make uh, all the text presets and the text actual layers easier to work with, easier to render, and uh, just more intuitive overall. Okay, this one's kind of hard to explain, but there's no scale to fit option. So DaVinci handles mismatched media totally different than Premiere. So there's no scale to frame size or scale to fit, none of that. So instead it works like this. First, your master project settings here, you can change how the overall image scaling will default to, and you can change that right here. And this is why it kind of gets confusing. So you have that option. You can also come into your timeline this is the timeline that I'm using right now and change it per timeline. So if I change this right now to um, stretch all frame to all corners, see how it affects that? So every clip in your timeline will get affected the same. So in my timeline, I actually usually leave it like this, scale entire image to fit. And then I'll come over into inspector and all the way at the bottom here, retime and scaling. So you can see it's using the project settings and you can override it and I'm gonna fill it. So that would be the same as fill image with crop if you change your timeline setting like that. So that is a lot more quicker and efficient than trying to manually resize and guess where the edges are. I really like this method, especially when you do it through a timeline, then all your media is pretty much good to go as soon as you drop it in. And using these methods totally threw me for a loop when I was so used to right clicking and scaling to resize. Grids, guides, and viewer snapping. There is no guides and snapping in the viewer in DaVinci, and I don't know why. There is snapping for text, uh, which is cool, that's fine and, and helpful for sure, but as far as I know currently, it doesn't work like that for regular clips. In Premiere, when you move a clip, you can snap it to the edges versus DaVinci. There is no snapping and there is no guides, which I used a ton in Premiere. And unless you add a grid effect to something in DaVinci, which uh, it just doesn't exist, I'm really hoping that this is an update that comes soon. Another obvious one here is nodes. Okay, so if I were to try to describe nodes to somebody coming from Premiere, I would describe it more as a flexible adjustment layer. And DaVinci also has adjustment layers built in, but they're definitely not as useful as they are in Premiere. And nodes are these really powerful, simple tools inside Resolve that are more used for advanced effects like tracking, masking, anything that is to do with color or in the fusion tab for graphics, these effects will all use nodes. So using nodes is definitely an ongoing learning process, but it's a fun one for sure, especially coming from Premiere. It really feels like I'm stretching myself, so I'm just looking forward to learning more and more about nodes. So my last point is arguably like 10 different points. But overall, it's just easier, more intuitive controls built right into editing. So that might sound weird. So let's run through just a few examples of what I actually mean. So for example, if we wanted to shift this clip around, we could simply click the period and comma keys to actually shift this clip back and forth here. Cool. But if we hit T, it enters trim mode. You can see that right here it switched. And now instead of moving the actual clip, we're slipping the clip. So right on the timeline here, you have three different modes, selection mode, which is the default for Premiere, uh, trim edit, and then dynamic trim slip. 
With just that example alone, that gives you so much more speed and control over editing. And then over here, we have the inspector, which I really like. It's just got way more controls like flipping that you don't have to add horizontal flips. You don't have to add a crop effect. Everything is just built in and all the keyframing is right on the side here. And if I make a bunch of changes here, you can just hit the global undo. And that is something else I really like. So let's add some keyframes here because keyframing was something that confused me at first, but once I learned it, it was actually way more intuitive than I, I thought it was gonna be. So this button right here is the keyframe. Then you hit this little arrow and you can see now all your keyframes. So let's add another position keyframe. And the big thing here is that I like that you're actually keyframing on the timeline. That is something that's very different from coming from Premiere. And something else that's different is you hit this guy. Now it shows your curve or speed editor. So these handles will apply easing and it just is so simple to add keyframes and see exactly what they're doing in real time. On top of that, back in the inspector, we have track mats or alpha mats burned right into the composite modes, which is really great. Same thing with stabilization, like basically warp stabilizer is only a click away. And I will say the built-in stabilization to DaVinci is way better than warp stabilizer and way less like jello-y. And uh, it, it really has blown me away at the speed of which it actually renders and the results that it gives. And just this entire thing, like lens correction and then all the retime and scaling. You have the same effects. If you just hit R on your keyboard, you have the speed effects. And then if you hit Command R, now you have your classic retiming tool. You can see the my mouse change there to something else. Those are all very, very similar to Premiere, but they did a really good job in the back end of the program to add as much versatility and flexibility while you're editing. So all the tools are actually at your fingertips rather than having to add additional effects and things like that. And because of these things, I actually edit a little bit differently and think about editing differently, which in turn has made it a little bit faster. And that to me is priceless. And that is why I will be switching to DaVinci Resolve just because of the intuitiveness of it all. So all in all, I do really think DaVinci still has a long way to go when you factor in the entire Adobe ecosystem. But for the Premiere versus DaVinci debate, I still think that they are slightly different tools for slightly different things, but the overlap between the two is becoming way bigger. At the rate that Blackmagic is investing and iterating on DaVinci is absolutely wild to me. I don't have any idea what the competition is gonna look like in five years from now because I really think uh, it'll be a completely different program by then. And because of that, I have a lot of faith to stick with the program and keep learning it. And uh, yeah, that's where I am right now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.